our new, almost pandemic era requires different types of leadership. One could almost say that we need courageous leadership. But what does that mean for you? And that's what we're talking about today on Mark Hain Live. Welcome to this episode. This is where small business owners and entrepreneurs pick up core skill sets to help them create the jaw-dropping, show-stopping experience that their customers and their employees deserve. I am your host, keynote speaker and customer experience expert, Mark Hain, and today I am excited to welcome back leadership expert, Rick Denwood. We will be chatting about how you can go through courageous and grow through courageous leadership, what courageous leadership is, so stay tuned and we'll get to all that in just a moment. I, I want to thank you for being here with me today. I know that time is the biggest commodity these days, and I hope that you and your team will get extraordinary value from today's content. If you find the information here valuable, go ahead and share it on social media. And of course, if you know somebody who could use the information, go ahead and tag them and make sure that you use the hashtag experience leadership because if we share information we help everybody grow if you followed this podcast for any length of time you know that i've been harping on our need as leaders to change this new era that we are in following this single biggest crisis of our lifetime which was the pandemic has created new expectations for how we as leaders behave and basically how we lead so that brings us to our question of the day. Okay, so this is a simple thumbs up or thumbs down question. Do your stakeholders, that is the people you do business with and the people you do business for, do they have different expectations of you? And do you have different expectations of them. Go ahead and share your experience on social media and make sure that you do go ahead and hashtag it experience leadership. As I mentioned, my returning guest today is keynote speaker and leadership expert Rick Denley. Rick's background includes leading Canadian divisions of multinationals based in Japan, France, Germany, and in the US. He is the co-author of Dynamo Diaries 2.0 and the author of Reinvent Yourself personal positive growth through any mess movement and mission. Rick is an undefeated amateur fighting fighter using his skills to raise funds and awareness, helping those with cancer beat that damn disease. Rick, it is so nice to have you back on the show. Welcome. I've been waiting for this for ages. Mark, it's great to be here. Thank you. I'm looking so forward to working with you again on your podcast. Thank you. Hey, maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about what you do for your clients. You know, that's a great question. At the end of the day, I help people reach their peak performance through all different areas that they're looking to learn and grow. You know, at the end of the day, we should be providing as leaders and coaches the correct skills, tools, and knowledge to people so that they can really flourish and become the best version of themselves in a role of mentoring, coaching, and leadership. Nice, nice. And, and so you're dealing predominantly, your customers and your clients are, are traditionally their leaders and business owners? Absolutely. From entrepreneurs to large corporations to C-level executives that are looking to ensure that they're bringing their best performance possible and bringing the value that their followers are looking for. Nice, nice. Hey, so I've been harping now about how leaders need to change. Like I've seen a complete change in the, in the work environments. In your travels, are you seeing that we are, as leaders, are we doing a good job of adapting to this new reality that we're in? You know, I've seen some that are doing a good job and others that are needing to level up even more than where they're at now. It's a mixed bag because people are confused because nobody in our lifetime has ever dealt with something like this, such as a pandemic. When the pandemic hit, who did we turn to? The pandemic experts? No, there weren't any. 
So we've all had to learn ourselves and grow through these difficult times and everybody has adapted and embraced it in different levels. Now, are you saying that there's still a lot of people still harping on the, but that's the way we always did it, mentality? A little bit, but that's getting less and less because as I speak to people about change, as you mentioned earlier, there is no growth without change. And if you're not willing to change, and I'm not talking about accepting change, embracing change. I'm talking about leading change, Mark. I'm talking about getting out in front of it and heading that change in the direction that you want it to go. Remember, there's only two types of change, right? That come our way. There's the change that we initiate and that we're going to drive. That one's easier and we hold ourselves accountable for it. It's the change that comes our way that we didn't ask for, which is very much more difficult for people. And I tell people change isn't difficult or hard. Avoidance of it is very difficult and hard. So we want to get out in front of that change as leaders and drive it in the direction that we want to take it. Right, right. So where, where do you think our biggest, and by our, I mean leaders in general, where do you think our biggest challenges are in this new era? You know, twofold. One is finding out what type of leader you are. So many people are worried about mimicking other leaders and watching them and doing exactly what they do. That's the first thing is to figure out what type of leader you are. And that type of leader that I speak to people and try and bring out in them is the leader of all their past leaders and experiences that they've had. They are a mosaic of their past. That makes them a very unique leader. And when we talk about authenticity, we want to be an authentic leader, not a mimic or a copycat of somebody else. People will see right through that. So you want to be a very authentic type of leader. And then finally, there's different leadership styles that are more appropriate for different challenges that organizations and people are going through. And we have to decide which is the best approach for that particular challenge. Mm, yeah, you bring up a really interesting point. So I want to dig into that a little bit later. But uh, at the very beginning, I mentioned um, kind of this idea that there are new sets of expectations um, surrounding leaders now. What does leadership yeah. today look like? And what will tomorrow look like, do you think, as far as those expectations? You know, the challenge of leadership is to create that change and facilitate growth. And when we talk about growth, it's growth of people and company in that order. Because people are the ones that will grow your company in the long run. So if we can help people grow and be their very best overall, then that is going to help the company grow. We need leadership now that has you know, a moral backbone, an ability to build trust and inspire people to be their best. That's the type of leadership that we're looking at that most people are needing right now. And the characteristics of that leader have changed tremendously from the past. You know, no longer is it the boisterous type of leader that we need, stomping around and being Neanderthal-like and so on. We use terms now in leadership such as vulnerability, empathetic leadership, openness, humility. Those words would never be used a decade ago and beyond, right? Before that, it was much different. This is what's needed now. This is what resonates with the up and coming generations as well. It's interesting because to your point, um, growing up, you know, in the and having my first jobs in the late 70s and early 80s, it was all about, you know, the, the you had to as an employee, you had to adapt to the leader. That's the way the leader is. That's the way he is. Steve, that's right. the way Steve is. But now, you, you know, to your point, it looks like it, one of the biggest skill sets we need as leaders now is adaptability to the different personalities that we're going to be working with. It's no longer a one size fits all. Right. And that's on us now. And that is completely reversed from what it was. You before had to conform to that leader's style and get along with the leader. Now it's reversed. We have to get along with the many people on our team and fully understand each of their needs. Leaders need to be intellectually honest, right? Providers of truth and useful, correct information. We have to have intellectual humility as well and help team members that are smarter than us unlock their full potential. 
That's the humility part. We are hiring and having people on our team that are smarter than we are in certain ways. But we have to bring out the best in them. And through all that as well, giving back to the company, we have to be a big systems thinker that looks at the big picture and how everything connects as well. Many challenges for leaders now, much different than they used to be before, where it was much more just pounding and strong accountability to get things done. That has all changed. And that's why I'll say what we need now, Mark, is courageous leadership. Yes. It is, you know, as you're you're uncovering some of this, you know, one of the things that popped into my head is, you know, I've I've worked with leaders and with own business owners, for instance, who will turn around and go, they have to listen to me. I'm the boss. And, you know, the outfall to that is they're the ones who are now crying, going, I can't attract anybody. I can't get new people in. The people I have are leaving me and so on. And they're because they've never adapted. And then the biggest aspect of that is this level of expectations now where to your point it says that you you said something to the effect that employees are smarter now and i would argue that they've always been smart now is the time that we've gone from paying for their hands their hands and their brain to now right. we have their hands their brain and their heart as well right which which Agreed. is interesting you're right i have to agree with that but the point that i was making is that good leaders don't have a problem hiring people that are smarter than them. Back in the day, a fearful leader would not do that because they might get overlooked. But nowadays, because we can set our humility aside, right? We can put our egos aside and hire people that are smarter and better than us and then bring out the best in them. Listen, during my fight training, I got taught by a coach and he had this great statement that I had to learn the hard way. And he taught me that, you know what? Your, your ego is not your amigo. It's not your friend. Sit it aside, get rid of it, and move on with the task at hand. Now, that's a tough thing for some people to learn, but it's vitally important. So, you know, I'd love to expand a little bit on that courageous leadership part, if I can. Yeah, and you know what? What I'd like to do first, before we get into that, is I'd like to get into some, get into some characteristics that make a good leader, and we'll get to that right after this. When the spotlight shines on your business, are customers applauding or yawning? In other words, how is your business performing? Make your business a star with a new book, Lights, Camera, Action, Business Operational Excellence Through the Lens of Live Theater by Mark Hain. Mark uses his business and acting experience to help you see your business like a live show so you can create a performance your customers will never forget. Buy Lights, Camera, Action today at your favorite online retailer or directly at markhain.com. I should have tapped in that that book is now available on Audible, which is fantastic. Welcome back. I am speaking with leadership expert Rick Denley. Uh, this is this has been so phenomenal thus far. I think we're, we're peeling back the onion on what it takes to be more of a courageous, um, more of a courageous leader. But perhaps we need to define a little bit what courageous leadership is and what does it mean to today's leader. Oh, that's a great question. Leaders have to look at themselves to start with and see what characteristics they bring and strength characteristics that they're very strong in and have developed over time. Let's look at a characteristic that isn't often associated with leadership of the past, but is needed in leadership of the future. And that would be vulnerability. Vulnerable leadership is having leaders be able to say, I'm not sure or I don't know the answer to that. Maybe we as a team can collectively come up with it. Leaders don't have to have all the answers right now. They have to be able to set clear objectives for the team, support them on them, give them all the skills, tools, and knowledge necessary to get the job done. And there's nothing wrong with bringing some passion, but people relate to people that are authentic and vulnerability is a very, um, characteristic that really makes you connect with people and trust them better. Along the lines of no like and trust, we want to get to trust as fast as possible with teams and with individuals to build a relationship. There's no better way to get to trust faster than to be vulnerable and say, you know what? I might not know that. I don't have all the answers. So Mark, number one characteristic for new leaders going forward, vulnerability. What would you say to a leader who's afraid of the vulnerable being vulnerable for fear that it might made, make them look weak? 
Well, this is the difference now. Vulnerability is not weakness. It's authenticity and it's connection with others. Everybody has issues that make them vulnerable. If you put yourself up on a pedestal of some sort of Superman or woman, you're not going to be relatable to others. And they're not going to be their 100% authentic self to you either. So you're not going to have that connection you need to bring out the very best in them. Love it. Love it. So that is vulnerability. What else is a characteristic of today's leader that needs to be put into place for us to be successful? Well, you know what? We talked about a few different things. Geez, I think the humility piece is big and we have to go back to that. We have to be humble. You know, it's, it's, it's along the lines of vulnerability, but humbleness as well is very important just to show people that you're human. Okay, that you don't have some strong shell outside and that they can come to you with their issues as well and connect with you on a much deeper level. And we don't have to show that we're the smartest one in the room all the time. Being humble is very important. Being humble is something different. But if we put ourselves in a position of being humble, then we don't have to always be the one in the room speaking. We can listen more than we talk and use these things in ratio, two to one, listening twice as much as we speak and be more humble so that the others get an opportunity to have the spotlight and grow and shine. I, I can't imagine how difficult being a leader would have been 30 years ago. Because when you think about it, like when I, as I grew in as a leader, I always had somebody above me and my, my thought process was, I can't wait till I'm at that level and I have all the answers. And then as I got up to that level, it's like, wait a second, I don't have all the answers. Um, <laughs> but imagine the stress that that must have created for leaders having to come yeah. into work every day and put on this facade of everybody's yeah. going to come to me and want my response to everything and I have to have the answers to everything. Where today, we have the yeah. ability now to leverage the brilliance of the expertise that we surround ourselves with. Correct. That's a great point. And that's how it should be structured going forward. So that those people have an opportunity to shine. Another characteristic or approach that you can take as well is to be more and, and inject more humor and smiles and levity. True. There's nothing that connects people better than humor a joke, something that connects you differently than just the work. And certainly a smile is very disarming. Yeah. And to people that think that it makes you weak, that you have to consistently look, remember in our day, Mark, if you didn't leave the office late into the night, yeah. completely exasperated, exhausted, and so on, and get home tired, you didn't put in a good day's work. That's not how it is, not how it should be either. We should have a much more upbeat tempo. You know, there's stats that show something along the fact of leaders that are humorous and inject smiles and such are seen as 27% more motivational than the ones that come down hard on people. The old Jack Welch type of leadership approach is not appropriate now and it doesn't work as well. So inject some smiles, inject some humor, build the relationships, get to that trust factor sooner and everybody as a team will work better. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I believe that we come to work and we play every day. Uh, we play at what we're good at. We're, we're playing in our you know, zone of genius and our brilliance. And so why not turn it to that that frame of reference where, you know, at the end of the day, we should be smiling at everything we managed to accomplish. Yes, we have stressors. Yes, we're going to have deadlines and that and budgetary constraints and everything else. But I think the coax of what we do every single day. Who was it? Somebody said that if you... If you go to work and play every day, then you don't work a day in your life or something. Right. right. This Sounds is fantastic. Good to me. Yeah. It does. Hey, hey, Rick, this is fantastic. Um, could you let everybody know how they can get in touch with you? If this is resonating with them. Um, how can yeah. they reach out to you to get some um, some advice, some coaching, uh, maybe talk to you about presenting? Thanks, Mark. Happy to. They can reach me at www.rickdenley.com. Okay. All the information is there for them. Um, there's three main areas, as you know, keynote speaking, uh, coaching and consulting that I do with organizations, all based around leadership and change. They can pick up a copy of my best-selling book, Reinvent Yourself, as well on Amazon. 
And if they want a free chapter of that, they can go over to the website, www.rickdenley.com and pick up a chapter to read and see if it's for them. Okay. Why don't, while you're on that topic, why don't you give us a quick one rundown? If people buy your book, what, what kind of uh, tools, what can they expect to get from your book? Yeah, Mark, I wrote the book to help people through change. It's called Reinvent Yourself because many times throughout my career and personal life, I've had to reinvent myself and change. And I've created the book as a blueprint. You can start it right away. There's exercises in there to help people get past some of the challenges involved with change and growth through reinvention. In fact, Mark, do you know the number one reason most people don't change or reinvent themselves? Fear? Fear. You got it. it fear. And we know with fear, right? You can either completely, I, I mean, you, you, what you should be doing is facing everything and rising, right? As opposed to fearing everything and running. So we want to rise. I give them methods to get over fear. You mentioned about my foray into the amateur boxing world. And that was very interesting for me to raise funds and awareness for cancer. But I became a carded amateur boxer. Do you not think there was a little bit a little bit of fear involved with that and stepping in the ring as I did on occasion to fight. Sure there was. So how you handle your fear and not get over it, but take that fear energy and drive it forward is essential. So we talk about that in the book as well as many other areas and great stories related to reinventing yourself through change. It's a blueprint for people that will help anybody as you said earlier, get through whatever mess they're in, whatever mission they might be on. Love it. Love it. And, and, and again, you bring in, you know, when you talk about this idea about fear of, you know, this idea of bringing a human in leadership roles, you're going to have fear. You're going to have fear of failure. You're going to have a level of humility to understand that you have fear and you have uncertainty in your life. Uh, which right. I think is brilliant. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about characteristics that make a really phenomenal leader. Uh, when it mm -hmm. comes down to, we also hear in the vernacular, we're hearing emotional quotient, we're hearing empathy. Um, how are those tied, do you think, to the leaders of the future? Well, when you, when you look at those characteristics, they are much more prominent in the up and coming generations. And we're looking to get the most out of people that are up and coming. Like, let's face it, you and I are getting a little long in the tooth now. We want that next generation of leaders to come up through and how we train them and coach them as well. And the empathetic part is part of it as well. People have been through the most challenging times probably of their life through this pandemic. And we have to exercise some empathy in that and become much more open in how we handle situations, the work-life balance that we talk about as well. There are much different expectations put on us as leaders and companies by the up and coming generations, millennials, Gen Z, they have different wants and needs and do things differently as well. As you said earlier, if you think that they're gonna mold into what we believe to be correct, we're wrong. It's up to us to change and attract and retain that top talent. Remember, for a leader of an organization, one of the main things they do is attract and retain top talent and develop them. That's the role at the end of the day. So how do we do that better? We do it through new and embracing characteristics like humility and empathy and openness. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to your point, people aren't gonna stick around now if they're, if they're not getting it. Um, these, these new sets of expectations um, is really a question of, again, it can't be one size fits all. You can't turn around and say, okay, we're going to put in a leadership program for all 20 of my employees. All 20 of your employees might not want to be on a leadership track. We actually right. have to get to know our people. That's a great point, Mark. We do. And one of the things that we need to do is create a career path for them. And as opposed to in the path, in the past, where an organization or company would say, well, this person's going to go here, 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 and then here. When we didn't even speak to them, all we thought about was what the company needed. Now we have to sit down with the individual and say, where do you want your career to go? And how can we help you get there? Mm -hmm. That is how you squash this great resignation and how you retain and develop top talent by listening to what they want and assisting them on their career path and then finding where all the benefits they bring 
help the organization grow. That's why I mentioned earlier, grow the people first, then the company will grow. Yeah. And, you know, as you go forward, you know, the more I'm thinking about the new expectations that people have now, the more this idea that managers have to become more of a coach than they mm. must be of a manager. And, you know, I see all too often, I, in fact, I was just uh, with a brand new client and one of the supervisors was um, doing the work of the employees. And so he's bogged and it's like, well, because we're short staffed and, you know, he, he just, it's faster if he does it. And it's like, but if he's doing the work that the employees are doing, how is he coaching and leading the team? Like, I don't right. know, like you had a boxing coach. How often did the coach go into the ring, push you aside and then say, no, no, that's not how you do it. Let's do it this way. And then he'd finish the fight for you. <laughs> Zero times. And it's a great example that you get. You're coaching, you're exuding, you're transferring that knowledge and skill sets and having them develop and grow. You know, it, I'm going to give you three different areas and actually action items that people and leaders can you use to become more courageous leaders? And on my list, you just mentioned it, become mentors and role models. That's what you should be doing. And make sure that you lead by example. It's not about demanding anymore, it's about demonstrating. So those are the things that we can be doing different as leaders. You know, you can also, as a leader, recognize efforts, not just results. That's courageous because companies say, KPIs. I want the results. I want to see the key performance indicators from this individual. What I help people understand as leaders is that if they recognize the efforts that are being put in correctly, the results will come. That will follow. You used the example of me boxing and training. I didn't have results. I just had the training. But my coach was very good to reward and recognize you're doing this right. You're doing this right. The rest will come. So that when I did step into the ring to spar initially and then actually fight, the results would come because of the recognition of the correct behaviors along the way. Courageous leadership means shedding decades old policies and procedures and going against them and getting rid of them because it's not the way to measure people anymore. Autonomy and trust is what we need to instill in the up and coming leaders and the people in our organizations. Is that helpful, Mark? That, and that makes so much sense, so much sense um, for, for leaders to start the, looking at how they're going to instigate this change. However, I do believe that we probably need, if for, for the leaders who are out there who don't necessarily have the culture that they want right now, that they should plan for some semblance of success. So I'd like to talk about that, and we'll do that right after this. When you're delivering an important speech to a huge audience, it's easy to lose your place or go way over time. Give yourself an advantage with the Pro Speaker Presentation Speech Timer app. No more checking your watch or calling for time. The Pro Speaker Presentation Speech Timer app keeps you on track with easy to see timers, even changing color for visual prompts during your speech. And you can set audio cues to practice or set it to vibrate so you don't even have to look. Be the pro you know you are. Download the app at speakerpresentationtimer.com. Welcome back. I hope you're getting a lot from today's episode. Uh, as you could tell, Rick and I are passionate about serving you and your team. If you belong to an association or are planning a leadership retreat or training session and think that we could serve your audience, please feel free to reach out to us. I know that both of us offer a 30-minute discovery call that we can take a look and see what your needs are, but I know that we would pray I have a sneaking suspicion, Rick, that we would make a pretty cool tag team uh, to help move teams forward. I think so as well. Now we're moving into wrestling, not so much boxing, but I like the idea. <laughs> hey, planning is such an integral part of leadership success, at least I feel. Uh, what advice do you have for today's leaders to embrace that one certainty change? How do they plan for it? You know, planning is very important. And I like to use a term, many of you might know that I'm a recovering engineer. So my first degree out of school was engineering. And it's funny because I pushed that down a lot of times because of the analytical connotations of it and such and anti-socialness of engineers, but that's not true. We do have those capabilities too. So I like to reverse engineer. I like to look at the end goal that the leader would like to achieve, whether it be in helping out particular people, 
or the company and then bring that back into bite-sized pieces over time and accomplish each of those going forward. Those type of behaviors will eventually create the success and the results that we want. And defining success is something different for everybody. And when I speak with especially inspiring and up and coming leaders, I ask them, what does success look like to you? And if I'm speaking with entrepreneurs or C-level executives, what is that success going to do for the organization? Then let's work it backwards and put in place the actionables that need to occur. And again, I speak with what skills, tools, and knowledge are we going to have to share with the people and the company to make that happen? Mm. Yeah, I can, I can understand that when people are kind of shaking up what's been happening in the last little while, uh, to your point, some people have jumped on the bandwagon and they've made changes and they're, they're uh, fighting, the, fighting the battle of, of change, but other people are still stuck. Um, and they're looking for ways, and I hate to say it, I, I really dislike when we do an episode like this and somebody gets an awareness and they go, oh, now I have, this is going to be the hot topic for the month. This is what we're going to do different for the whole month. Um, yeah. So so part of it is I'd like to understand when it comes time to shifting our approach and looking towards this ability to become this courageous leader, are there any cautionaries that we should be talking about today as people want to migrate to this new definition of leader? Well, I don't want anybody to lose their leadership approach that they have, which is themselves as well, that authenticity piece. Let's not change who we are and how we approach things as well. Little injections of different areas that can supplement and fill the white spaces in your leadership are most important right now. Um, you know, the confidence to stand alone as a leader is something that can't go away. And that will always be there as much as we have coaches and mentors as you are, Mark, and I am to others as well. We have to really make a stand at time, especially, as I mentioned, on principles and values. That's where the authenticity part comes in. And more than anything else, we have to look to be very compassionate leader going forward. You know, we have to listen tremendously to others and listen to understand, not respond so quickly. And then take that information in. Say, how am I going to help this individual be their best going forward? Growing people and developing them to get them to their peak performance is what leadership is all about. Yes, yes, yes. And again, having that grace to understand that as you become mm -hmm. that courageous leader, as you make that battle yeah. to create that, become that courageous leader, that you're going to fail. And failure... Failing forward is part of how we learn. I mean, to your point about the boxing, I mean, did you win your first match for the first time you got in and actually sparred with somebody? Were you Let perfect? me tell you a story about that, a quick one, Mark. And it's a great story as well. And it's where I learned my humility. We started off with a team of 10 boxers that were in the fight to end cancer. People had no experience whatsoever, all different age ranges. And I picked it up fairly quickly, as did others being an athlete. And well, I thought I was doing fairly well when I was sparring with the other nine teammates who were also new to the sport, to the point where I think my ego and cockiness was getting a little bit large. So my coach introduced me to other fighters that were extremely experienced in the early sparring who were also a little bit younger than me, we'll say. Well, I got humbled very quickly. And... It, you know, the hard way, very hard way. I got humbled quickly, but that was okay because I learned from that. And I learned that humility is okay. And guess what? I wasn't the best anymore. And I realized very quickly, I had so much more to learn as well. So it took me down a notch, which can be necessary at times. And just realizing we can make mistakes as well, and then still move forward. As leaders, we should always be seeking progress within our individuals, not perfection, especially over time. That'll make all the difference in the world. And, you know, you were blessed. You had a coach. You had somebody who could see where your strengths were, where your weaknesses were, and put you in situations yeah. to help shake that up. Um, we've done episodes on this podcast about whether or not you need a coach and what kind of coaches there are out there. Um, when oh, you, yeah. when people approach you, Rick, uh, to, to coach them, uh, what kind of outcomes are they asking you to help them with? 
Well, it's interesting. Initially, and there's a big difference between coaching and mentoring as well. <laughs> People that are looking for a mentor are looking for somebody who can help them not make the same mistakes that, that the mentor did throughout the years. And that's a good thing to have as well. But a coach identifies their strengths and weaknesses, analyzes it with them and creates a plan so that they improve in those areas to reach the end goals that they want. The other main thing that a coach does, and we talked about this earlier, Mark, is hold the people accountable. We all need accountability. Self accountability only takes us so far. Then we need a coach to hold us accountable for the rest of that journey. Set a path execute, be held accountable. These are the things that a coach can help individuals with so that they can reach their best performance. Love it. This has been such a fabulous episode. As we wrap up, do you have any last thoughts, Rick? Well, you know what? I want people to understand something as well. Everybody's going through something right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. You're, you're much stronger than you think you are. You're much more knowledgeable than you think you are as well. And we need to be sure that our self-talk is very strong and that we support ourselves and the things that we're doing, knowing that we're not going to be perfect, but encouraging others to make difficult decisions just as we will, knowing that if we do fall down, we're going to get back up over and over again. Because however you define success at the end of the day, it's the ones that don't quit and just keep moving forward. And leadership of today and tomorrow will be what you make it. Love it. Could you remind everyone one more time how they can get a hold of you? www.rickbenley.com. All my information's there. I click on a session for 15 minutes and let's have a discussion and see if there's an opportunity and a fit for us to work together in any way, shape, or form. That's fantastic. Rick, thank you so much. I really Mark, appreciate thanks for having you. Brilliant as always. I, I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge, your passion, and your expertise. I love hanging out with you. Uh, it's, it's something to be said about, you know, hanging out with uh, my brother from another mother. So it's, uh, it's wonderful. Thanks, Mark. I hope you took lots out of today's episode. I, I hope you jotted down notes and you took a lot of takeaways that you yourself can share with you and your team. And as always, my offer stands. If you would like a complimentary 30-minute brainstorming session with myself and your team, feel free to book yourself on my online calendar. The link is down below in the show notes. It's the one marked meetwith.markhain.com. As always, I am at your service. And if you haven't done so yet, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to this podcast and make sure that you follow me on social media. Every once in a while, I'll put out a tidbit of information that maybe you could use. It's been a pleasure being here with you and serving you today. My name is Mark Hain. I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you dare to be the exception.